Hey everybody, it's your good buddy Thorn. Today we're going to talk about uh, kind of a crafting project you could do. Um, it's not going to take a lot of skill. You need a little bit of woodworking knowledge, but not a whole lot. What we're going to build is a Osberg sea chest. Um, and the plan we're going to use is found on the internet. It's pretty simple, straightforward. It's, it's also kind of known as a six board chest. But it's not that hard to do. And I know you're saying, well, why do I even want to make one of these, Thorn? I've got rough totes. I've got plastic stuff to put my gear in. Well, this is one of those things that you can pull out and you can have it. You can see it. You can sit on it. Um, but it also uses kind of a small table. And it looks good. It looks it looks authentic. So you can pull it out of your tent, maybe set it up uh, outside, play a game of, of, of dice or whatever on it. Uh, so with that in mind, did a quick look online and came up with some plans. And this is the Osberg Sea Chest, Norway, 800 to 850 AD. It's, it's, it's a six-board chest, guys. It's pretty straightforward. Um, your Norse raiders use them as their sea chest. They put stuff on them. They also use them as a seat in, in the long ships. So with that in mind, I'm going to use probably half inch ply uh, to make this. I could make it out of pine, um, but I'm going to use the plywood instead because I have that on hand. You can use a uh, you could use plywood, uh, and it wouldn't be that hard. Um, half inch ply will work pretty good. Uh, it'll cut well, and if I screw it up, I'm not out a lot of money. But hardware, uh, I wanted to get some hasps, and I wanted to get some hinges that had that kind of rustic um, hammered feel to it. So a quick look online, went down to the local hardware store that kind of had what I wanted, but I also looked on Amazon and I found hasps. Very simple, very straightforward. Your good buddy Thorne's not a rich man and his character is even not richer. Poorer? I don't know. But anyway, so these hasps got a nice hammered iron look to them. Or the, these are the hinges. The hasp is a little more decorative. Which I, kind of, I think it's kind of cool. You can see the pieces that we're talking about. And I think all together with three hinges in the hasp, um, I picked them up off of Amazon and I just I typed in a search for wrought iron hinges, wrought iron hasps. Um, I think I paid $25 for the entire set. Uh, they came in two different pieces. And then, because, well, Thorn has some, some stuff he doesn't want everybody to see in his sea chest. How am I going to lock it up? Uh, I don't want to use your master lock because it just, it just throws away the whole thing. But I do want to lock on it. So once again, Amazon did a search for medieval locks, and I think this one was 15 bucks. It's it's an India lock. It's really rough, but it's kind of what we're looking for. And it comes with two sets of keys. It's a straight key. Um, so in game, if if a thief wanted to pick this lock, it wouldn't be that difficult. It would be actually kind of cool uh, to have somebody pick a lock. So. But it does, it does function like a regular lock. Well, maybe it does. There we go. And the hasp opens up. And it's pretty dang, I think it's just cool and chip. And once we lock it, store the key, and my chest will be locked. It, it's a pretty good sized lock. It doesn't quite fit the other hasp piece. Um, So I'm going to take my Dremel and kind of drill that out just a little bit, kind of clean it out just a little bit, and it should slide right in there with no problem. Because, let me show you. Got to be smarter than a lock door. There you go. So you got this, and you got this. It does fit in there, but it's just a touch tight. And once I put the hasp on top of the the hole it doesn't quite fit 
But a little bit of grinding right here with the Dremel. Take me about five minutes. It'll be perfect. So our first step, our first step uh, was to find the plans. We found the plans online, printed them out, single page, all of it's written down in there. You can read it. Um, can you see it? There is the, there's the, um, <laughs> there's the, there's a URL right there. It is um, uh, wareham.forge.cal, www.wareham.forge.ca. And they've got a various, uh, they got various plans out there and it's free to download. Come out as a PDF, you print them out. Um, but like I said, this is a six board chest. Six board chest means four sides, top and bottom, six. Straightforward. Um, the next step is to take this on this little piece of paper and draw out a full size pattern. Um, why? Why draw your full size pattern out, Thorn? Well, if this works the way I think it's going to work, it's going to look pretty good. I'm probably going to want to make more of these. So making a full size paper pattern uh, will help me in the long run. So if I want to make another one the exact same, I can. Um, and it's going to be pretty quick and easy. All right, let's get started. So here we got the the front and back pattern drawn on the paper. It is uh, that's one to one scale. It's about thirty four inches long on the bottom, and thirty inches at the top. That gives it that nice angle. It's all measured out. So let's just grab the hasp and see how that looks. Yeah, now with the little hasp in place, you're kind of kind of getting a feel for it. Ah, yeah, I think it's going to look pretty good. Um, it's, uh, yeah. You said the, the measurements were originally in centimeters. I changed them into inches. And I added a couple just to make it, uh, just to make it about the size that I want. So we'll see how that works. And here you can see the, the top with the, uh, the hinges and the hasp in place. And yeah. I think it's going to look pretty good. And uh, the next thing that I need to do is to um, go ahead and do the sides. And I'll cut those out here in just a second. Yeah, so I got the, uh, the sides, the front and the back, and the top cut out. The bottom I'm going to make the pattern once I get the wood cut for the other sides because it's going to take into consideration the thickness of the wood. But with the hasps and the hinges in place, you're kind of getting an idea of how big this thing is going to be and how cool it's going to look. So, the next step, let's go cut some wood. Okay, so I'm out here in the shop, got my potter and lay it out onto the wood, about ready to mark it, and then we'll start cutting. Okay, we got five of our six pieces cut out now. And they're rough cut, because um, I'm going to hit them with the, the sander, but I want them to kind of look like rough oak or rough planks of wood um, my character is he's kind of a poor guy so he's not gonna have the best quality stuff so the next piece is we're gonna kind of fit the sides and the front and back together so we can measure for the bottom piece so here do you see it uh, well the sides and back put together just with nails very simple now I measured the bottom so we can get the uh, the bottom piece put on you know, from here and then over. And that's why we did it till la or saved it till last so we could kind of make sure that that fit right. And then once that's on, all we do is attach the top, sand it down, uh, and then we'll coat it. And I think it's going to look pretty dang good. You can get an idea of the size. Um, like I said, it's about 35 inches wide and it stands Right around 16 inches, so it's going to be about right to, to sit on. Oh, it's a little shaky cam, but, you know, live with it. And that's kind of what we're looking at with the top on before we do any grinding on it. I put the uh, hinges and the hasp on there just to kind of see what it looks like. And yeah, I think it's going to look pretty good. Well, next bit is get the grinder out, get the sander out, and do a little cleanup on the edges. Well, I'm back in the shop, or in my office here. 
Um, I, I was looking at the hinges and I was looking at the hasp. I'm not wasn't pleased with exactly how this was going to go together. I was going to have to put the hinges on the interior and I don't want to waste those decorative hinges on this. So I ran downtown real quick and spent about eight bucks. Got two hinges and another hasp and I'll put that on there because I want the hinges to be inside so the, the surface of the top is flat enough that I can play a game or something on it. So let me get that stuff put on there and I'll, we'll take a look and see how it looks. So I've got our bench done, uh, our seat chest done, and here it is sitting on the floor. And it's about 16 inches high. And why? Because here it is next to a chair. And it's perfect. So yeah, there we got it done. Greg Gray Hobbs is here taking a look at it. It is about 36 inches long total. And about, huh? About 11 and a half inches wide, your interior. Hold on, Hobbs. The interior is about uh, 32 by 10 by 10, more or less. Pretty straightforward. We still have some design work to do. We're roughing this up to make it look like uh, wood planks rather than uh, just sheets of plywood. Then we will do a little bit of carving on the front to give it a little bit of decoration. And hey, we're done, kids. And that wasn't that bad. Not that bad at all. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up for this episode. Um, I didn't think it was that hard. What about you? Total construction time. Once I had everything on hand, uh, that's the, the hasps and the hinges and the locks and all that. A little prior planning. I had to order some of that stuff. About three hours. Cut it out, draw it out, do all that. And that's with me um, taking video during all of it, so Oh, well, wasn't that bad, was it? No, no, it wasn't. Oh, do you see what... Do you see what I see? Do you see that on the workbench? Guess what that is. That's the next project. That's the next review. Yeah, the Agrippa II is in my hands. The Kalamazoo Agrippa II. Uh, they call it a rapier. I would call it... I'm not sure... A self sword, maybe a short sword. It's, it's it's a long, long self sword. Do you want to take a peek at it? Did you want to take a peek? I know you want to take a look at it. Just give me a second. I like it. I'm going to do, I will do, I promise, I will do a full review on this. But I know you guys wanted to take a look at it. And it is one long pokey stick. Look at that. All right. This is coming up. I promise you. I will get this in a review and it will be online and you'll say, oh, I really want one. Kalamazoo. Great job, guys. Just a second. Okay. Oh, goodness, what are we talking about? We're wrapping up this episode. I think it came off very well. Once I get it completed and painted and stained and all that, and, and, and I'll get you more pictures up, and we'll see this thing packed up and ready to go. Can't wait to get it down into the LARPing field. It's going to be cool. I already have some ideas for the top, for the game board. Um, yeah. But you know, it's been a long day. It's been a long day. So, guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for the support. And uh, I'm going to break a cold one. Have a good day, kids.